There's a number of mechanics in Pokemon that can lead to someone making the first healthy decision of their life, snapping the Nintendo Switch in half, and giving up on competitive Pokemon altogether. But the one that has been there since the very beginning has been Evasion, the only mechanic that lets you hypothetically take no damage for the remainder of a match. Now, this isn't going to be a video on accuracy, though we will obviously have to touch on accuracy to explain Evasion, but Evasion is a very tricky subject in Pokemon. There are some people who believe that Evasion boosting moves should be outright banned due to the very nature of them discouraging skill based gameplay in favor of just rolling the dice. Yet, despite evasion being so strong and not being banned in official tournaments, the mechanic isn't terribly popular. Today we'll explain what evasion is, how it works, and why the best players tend to avoid using it. If you enjoyed this video gameplay in time, be sure to leave a like and subscribe because I make tons of competitive Pokemon content. As a matter of fact, you should subscribe right now because I have a playlist full of content just like this that I know you'll enjoy once this video ends. And if you think you're subscribed, do me a favor and double check because like only half of my viewers actually are. Okay, let's get into it. Webster's Dictionary defines evasion as a really dumb way to win games of Pokemon. And while I think that's a pretty reductive way of looking at it, I can't really argue with the professionals. To explain evasion in Pokemon, I have to explain the very fundamentals of the game, so bear with me here. In Pokemon, each turn you select a move. I know, right? Isn't this groundbreaking? That move will either damage your opponent, raise the user's stats, lower the target's stats, inflict a status condition, or cause a field effect. Typically speaking, stronger moves in Pokemon will have slightly lower accuracy to offset their inherent power, while lower power moves will have perfect accuracy. Take for example the move Head Smash. This rock type move is a whopping 150 base power. The move coming off of a usable 115 attack stat like that of Hisuian Arcanine can result in massive damage if not straight up one shotting the opponent. It's for this reason that the move has only 80 accuracy, meaning about 1 in 5 head smashes will not connect with the opponent. You can also take, for example, Oko moves, which will always have 30 accuracy at level 50, meaning that while they will result in just a straight up KO, most people tend to avoid them since most of the time you're not going to get anything out of them. Them. Although you could hypothetically roll the dice and win instantly. In a game like Pokemon, missing a single move can result in a snowball effect leading to a game loss. Trust me, walk into any tournament venue and ask people how their last match was. You'll be met with an explanation of how they would have won if they only landed that Heat Wave, Rock Slide, or Hydro Pump. While missing moves can be annoying, if it weren't for accuracy, there'd be no point in having moves like Thunderbolt exist when Thunder is just the better option. Accuracy makes it so even before the battle begins, players have to make individual value judgments on if they'd rather have the big funny button that annihilates everything sometimes, or the move that deals a reasonable amount of damage 100% of the time. Or hey, if you want both, you can run both at the expense of having coverage options. I mean, Articuno did just win a tournament with only ice moves. But evasion takes the game balance mechanic of accuracy and throws it right out the window. Evasion boosting moves, abilities, and items cause moves that would hit 100% of the time to start to have a chance to miss. In an ideal situation, the best item in the game is technically the Bright Powder. This item causes all moves targeted at the holder to have a 0.9 times multiplier on their accuracy, making it so 100% accurate moves now have 90 accuracy, and higher power lower accuracy moves like Hydro Pump will only have 72 accuracy. If the luckiest player on earth ran this item on their Pokemon, they could hypothetically avoid every single attack coming at them. Yet, the Bright Powder sees nearly no usage in competitive Pokemon. Why is this? Yes, this Pokemon could hypothetically allow your Pokemon to avoid a lethal Wicked Blow, but 9 times out of 10, your Pokemon is basically not holding an item. They'd almost always prefer to have Leftovers, Citrus Berry, Life Orb, or anything that actually has a guaranteed return for the user. This isn't to say that Bright Powder has no use in competitive Pokemon. There are actually a number of Pokemon which have historically run the item as one of their better options. Take for example VGC 2023 Articuno. Articuno has the ability of Snow Cloak, which passively causes all moves targeted against it to have 80% of their usual accuracy if Snow is active. Combining this with the Bright Powder means that 100% accurate moves will now only have 72 accuracy. Obviously dodging more than 1 in 4 moves and removing that damage entirely is a really powerful strategy. This combination was also achievable by Pokemon like Sandville Garchomp in Sandstorm. With their respective weathers active, Articuno and Garchomp could throw out powerful blizzards or earthquakes with occasional impunity. However, the reason that these strategies saw heavy usage in previous VGC formats is because this strategy required nearly no setup beyond having a Pokemon on the field with Snow Warning or Sandstream. By having this evasion increase occur passively, Players didn't need to take multiple turns to set up weather or moves like double team to start to see any value out of the Pokemon. They could immediately start tossing out those powerful attacks. This is by far the most common way to run evasion in competitive Pokemon, but just because some players would rather not take any time to set up doesn't mean that there weren't entire teams dedicated to the strategy. In previous years of EGC, Chansey was actually the face of evasion teams. 
Chansey's massive HP and already high special defense stat were further boosted by it being able to hold the Eviolite item. This item would passively increase the defense and special defense stats of not fully evolved Pokemon by 50%, meaning that Chansey was nearly unkillable by special moves and would be pretty bulky on the physical side of things if fully invested in HP and defense. While Chansey would be able to function on its own, it didn't do nearly enough for a team if the team wasn't built around it specifically. This is mainly due to its abysmal attack stat, making it a pure stall Pokemon. Chansey teams would actually pair their Chansey with Shuckle, a Pokemon with massive defenses, albeit a very low HP stat. By using Guard Split from Shuckle onto Chansey, Chansey and Shuckle would average out their defense stats, causing Chansey to have its already okay defense stat boost by Eviolite to become even more ridiculous. With this newfound bulk, Chansey would begin to click Minimize, making it nearly unhittable after just a couple of turns of setup, at which point it would win the game by a combination of Toxic Stalling and clicking Seismic Toss to deal a consistent 50 HP worth of damage every turn. While this team was very frustrating to unprepared players, it was actually highly exploitable if the opponent knew what they were doing. You see, the major weakness of this team lies entirely with how long it takes to set up Chansey. We're talking multiple turns of clicking Minimize, Guard Split, and Toxic, during which the person playing against the team has all the time in the world to click moves like Taunt, Roar, or just straight up nuke one of the essential Pokemon in the turns of setup. The team even had a hard auto loss in the Parish Song if they didn't tech something ridiculous like Skill Swap Soundproof Mr. Mime. It's here that we see the biggest weakness of evasion strategies and why most players tend to avoid them. In the time it takes to set up evasion, more proactive plays could have been made. Yes, on the right teams, you're setting up a near 100% win condition. But in the turns you spent rolling the dice and having the opponent miss their moves, you could have just as easily clicked Rain Dance and Surging Strikes to pick up a KO against one of the essential Pokemon. We see a very similar weakness in the modern iteration of this type of team. Currently, the most popular evasion strategy requires the player to run two very low tier Pokemon in Alolan Muk and Flamigo. The setup begins with the player leading off with Alolan Muk with the ability Power of Alchemy. Power of Alchemy causes the user to take the ability of whatever partner Pokemon faints while it's on the field. The other lead Pokemon is a Focus Sash Smeargle with Fake Out, Spore, Follow Me, and Spiky Shield. On turn 1, Smeargle can guarantee Muk gets a Minimize off by clicking Fake Out into the opponent. On the next turn, Muk will likely get a second Minimize off since Smeargle will redirect all attacks into it with Follow Me. With Muk at plus 4 evasion, it's already nearly unkillable. But with Smeargle going down, Muk can now steal its ability in Moody. Moody causes the user to gain plus 2 into a random stat and minus 1 into another one at the end of each turn. This causes Muk to have its stats randomly boosted until you're likely facing down a Pokemon with maxed out evasion and insanely high defenses. This is slightly more reliable than the Chansey strategy since Muk has actually usable offensive stats and good moves like Knock Off and Poison Jab, along with passive recovery and leftovers since it doesn't have to hold the Eviolite. But beyond that, once the Muk is fully set up, a partner Flamigo can hit the field and copy all of Muk's boosts to sweep the opposing team due to its ability co-star. Surely this more proactive version of an evasion team can do well in tournaments, right? Well, once again, an experienced player can see this coming from miles away, and what's worse is that the tools used to beat evasion strategies in previous gens are becoming more and more common in modern generations on well-made teams. Take for example Parish Song, a move which causes all Pokemon to faint after a set number of turns if they don't leave the field. While previously Parish Song was a rare move teched onto very particular Pokemon or was used on dedicated Parish Trap teams, nowadays it's more common than ever as just a fourth move on Pokemon like Fluttermane. Since this move can improve teams' matchups into Dondozo or Iron Defense Body Press Pokemon like Registeel or Kamoa. Sacred Sword is yet another move which absolutely stuffs this strategy. It's a 90 base power fighting type move which ignores all the opponent's stat boosts. While it was previously a move with extremely niche distribution being on just a few Pokemon, more Pokemon than ever have it at their disposal as just a reliable fighting type move that they might choose over close combat. Most notable among these Pokemon is Chen Pao, a powerful and common option for balance and hyper offense teams alike, meaning that even if the player wasn't expecting to face a Muck Evasion stall, all they really need to do is hold onto their Chen Pao long enough to KO the Muck despite its defense increases and evasion. And while Gallade and Iron Boulder aren't nearly as common as Chen Pao is, they too have access to this move and can effectively counter Muk all on their own. There are even more moves which are specifically made to counter Minimize, which can completely make this strategy pointless. A lot of people don't know this because it's rarely useful information, but Heavy Slam, Heat Crash, and Dragon Rush will all never miss and deal double damage to a Pokemon which has used Minimize. Heat Crash is one of the most common moves on Gouging Fire, which has had a phenomenal season in 2024. And Heavy Slam is teched onto just about 
every team that wants to one-shot the likes of Fluttermane and other very light steel weak Pokemon. So there's a lot of situations where all you really need to do is end game muck with any one of these options. But above all else, the one thing that makes Evasion such a noob trap is the move Taunt. This single move could possibly be the best move in the game, right behind Protect. Taunt simply prevents the target from being able to click non-damaging moves for a few turns. The move is essential on some teams for making deep tournament runs. Taunt can shut down Trick Room, prevent Tailwind, and most relevant to this conversation, completely shut down evasion setups. This move is one of the most widely distributed moves in the game, meaning it's extremely easy to slot onto just about any team. If you were to build a team with Chen Pao, Urshifu, Tornadus, Heatran, Fluttermane, and Rillaboom, a team which you could reasonably expect to see at the top tables of a tournament in 2023, do you know which one of the Pokemon could possibly run Taunt on it? I'll give you a second to guess. Do you have your answer? Okay, because it's all of them. Literally every single Pokemon on this team can and has run Taunt as a fourth move to shut down setup. You can imagine a move as ubiquitous as Taunt would put a damper on any hard setup evasion strategies. But do you know what's an even bigger damper on it? It's the fact that at any point, your setup evasion Pokemon that you spent the majority of the match setting up could just get hit anyways or crit and knocked out, automatically losing the match and ending your tournament run. Yeah, the odds are technically in your favor, so you could just win anyways, but all these factors stopping the evasion from ever getting set up, along with the chance of you just losing anyways, Ways, is the reason you don't tend to see evasion strategies making deep runs at major tournaments. But it's still very fun, so you know, keep spamming it on ladder. But that's why evasion is pretty bad in competitive Pokemon. Do you disagree with me? If you do, you're wrong, but feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. And hey, while you're down there, let me know what topic you'd like me to cover next. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. It'd mean the world to me. And if you want to support me even further, you can check out my Patreon page or become a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button below the video. This gets you sneak peeks at future videos as well as some bonus content. Content. You'll also see your name at the end of my videos, just like all these lovely people. A special thanks to my most boosted supporters, Avatar67, Jordan Harridge, and Rager Lance for their generous pledges. Another way to support me is by checking out all the videos on the playlist on screen right now. I know you'll find something in there that you'll enjoy. You can also check out my second channel, where I upload daily battle content as well as discussion videos about what's going on in the current metagame of competitive Pokemon. I also stream on Twitch, so, you know, all the plugs in this one. I'm just, I'm just throwing all the plugs out there. Please look at my content. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.